Well, this viewer says, actually, this is a member who says, um, wonder if you can help me with your six degree intensity wheel. I got one free from your website, but I don't know how to use it. Would you do a quick tip explaining how to use it? Well, let's do that. Well, if you want a free copy of this, uh, go to dianemise.com and click in the menu, click on free stuff, and cursor around in there, you'll find it. Uh, it's called the Six Degree Color Wheel. Now, here's its purpose. I did this to help um, emerging artists to see the very saturations of colors and how they relate to each other. Let me show you the advantage in having some reference like this to do that. For example, suppose you have the color, uh, a tube color, and you are trying to get, um, you're trying to get something similar to it, but you can't quite decide which way to go or how to make it work. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, this is burnt sienna. That's a common color a lot of people have. So if we put some burnt sienna down on the palette, then how would you know what to do? If you needed that burnt sienna, if, if, if the color you wanted was, was just a little bit, had a little bit more, say, orange in it than you see in the burnt sienna, uh, how would you know what to do? Well, let me show you how you can find out. Now, th there are two ways that you can use this intensity wheel to help you mix color and to help you see color correctly. So I'm going to go this way first. Uh, I say two ways, two reasons. One is to help you to identify what your tube color can actually do. And then the other is to help you to read whatever color you're, you're looking at and know how to mix it. So we'll go both ways. First of all, so the burnt sienna, um, as it is, comes out of the tube, is going to be something like this. And I will show you on just with the, the brush stroke on the canvas here, something like that. Well, see, that's very dark in value, but it doesn't look like anything here. That tells us then, because we can tell that this is lighter, all of the, these colors that feel like it might belong somewhere in here, all those are lighter. So that would tell us we need to add a little bit of white to it to, to kind of know what to do with it. And so what we'll do there, is we will add just a little white. Let me get my paper towel here because I want to be sure I'm able to control this. Wipe off that palette knife and just pick up a little bit of white and put beside it and pull it in to whatever color you're identifying. In this case it is burnt sienna. We'll just pull it, raise the value of it with white until we say, ah, now I can tell a little bit more about it. And so then, oh, let me just go ahead and follow that through on the canvas. And so rinse the brush out really good. When you're doing uh, experiments like this, always keep your brush rinsed in between and then dry it very good in between so that you really know what you're doing. And that way you can always have control of the colors you're mixing. So that, that burnt sienna with the white added into it then, you see, is changes value into this right here. Now, how do we know which hue of the hues, all the 12 hues on traditional color wheel, how do we know which hue this is and why do we need to know? Well, why we need to know is so that we'll know what to do with that color if we need to change it. If, 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 you're, if what you're trying to paint is a little different, and it will be, <laughs> Then what comes out of the tube, even with white added, uh, this will help you to know what to do to change it, to know what hue it is as it comes out of the tube. Now, so let's, let's just I'll walk, walk you through that now and show you how that works. Now, if we'll take that value corrected burn sin, let's pull just a little bit of white over here and, and get it, uh, get enough so that we can work with it. 
take that value corrected burnt sienna. Let's see, yeah, that's close enough. And use little test strips like this. You can use the back of your palette knife. Either way works. But let me just take it to the extreme here and kind of show you how you can do that. If you bring that color, you see what I'm doing here. Bring that color all the way to the edge of your test strip. See there? Like that. Just so you can see. Now, if we take it over here, we're going to find, I'll guarantee you, whatever color your, comes out of your tube, or whatever color you're looking at in nature, you're going to find it somewhere right here. The hue. You won't find the value. The color wheel doesn't tell us anything about value. But it does tell us everything about hue and everything about the, de the saturation, various saturations of hue. So, if I hold this up here, I'm seeing, look at that. I'm seeing that that, that that mixture I made is right here. Now, what color is that on the color wheel? That is red-orange. So that tells me that in its high saturation, um, burnt sienna is really red-orange. So if I had a red-orange, uh, let's just pull a little bit of that here and put a little yellow in it so that we can get it uh, closer to red-orange. If I have that red-orange in full saturation, you see, that's what we have. So, uh, so then, two ways to go here. If you wanted the red-orange you're making to be a little bit more like this color of red-orange, a little bit more in this range, if that's what you're seeing, you would know then that you can add a little bit of the highly saturated red orange to it and you see you get that. It's going to change the saturation. It's going to raise the saturation to help you to get closer to that color. So a lot of times when you think that you're right in that range you can't quite get it. It's just a matter that it needs a little bit more hue in it. And that's what saturation does. Uh, when you're adding uh, the higher saturation you're adding more hue to it. It's like adding more salt to food or or something like that. So and so then you see we get some get a color like this and that gives us a uh, closer and I didn't put enough paint on the brush to really pull that in. There we go. That's there we go. So you see you you can control the amount of the saturation by just pulling up and adding more once more of the saturated color once you realize that's what you have. Now, how would you get it less saturated? Well, to get it less saturated, you go right across the color wheel and you say, what do you need to get it less saturated? This color is blue-green. So to get it less saturated, that means to get burnt sienna less saturated, if you need that, um, you can, let me get this value corrected again. That's just so that we can see it. Blue-green, now, um, we have two tube colors that are really, really good uh, dark blue-greens. We have the Rembrandt brand of Viridian, and we also have the Thalo green. So I've got the Rembrandt uh, Viridian here, and so we'll just use that and see, we'll see does that, is that going to be the right blue-green? And put just get that just a little bit closer in value to what we have here. And so, and then we add that into the burnt sienna right here and you see that gets it less saturated. You see it right there. In fact, if we keep adding that blue-green into it, we're going to get something very close to burnt umber. So, and then I'll show you that. You see, so by knowing what hue you have coming out of your tube, then you know all kinds of things you can do to work with that hue. Um, and so, yes, you can use, I can hear it in my ear right now. Somebody's going to say, well, you can use ultramarine blue. Yes, you can. Uh, because it's red-orange, if you use anything that has blue in it, blue and orange are complements. And so if you use one of these relative colors here that have blue in them, you're going to get a degree of desaturation. You'll get a true desaturation when you use the one that's direct complement. <laughs> All right, so here we go. There's there's the uh, there's the more desaturated version, and so you can see there you can control that 
that way. So uh, it, you, it's just a matter of realizing that when you look at a color, learn to call it by its hue. As it's coming out of the tube, learn to call it by its hue, and then you'll be able to work with it, know what it does, and you can identify that hue. I have all the possibilities, well, the degrees of possibilities of saturation right here, all outlined for you on this intensity wheel. And you can get a free copy of that, as I said before. Now, the other use for uh, being able to use the intensity wheel is identifying colors that you are looking at. Colors and color, think, think about, uh, I get lots of questions. How do you make sand? <laughs> How do you make sand on the beach? What you're looking at on the beach is a one color, the color of the sand, but then what the light's doing to it is going to be something else. That's a good reason to know how to identify what you're seeing. And so if you were looking at sand on the beach, uh, then you might do something like this. Well, I don't have sand on the beach here. I have something else, but I'll, I'll just show you. You can use a little isolator like that. Just take a 3 by 5 card, cut off a little rectangle of it, cut, uh, punch a little hole in it, and you can hold it, if you're out in a little plain air, you can hold it up just like this and close one eye. And you can isolate that color and you can see it. And you can hold the intensity wheel up with it and you can identify the hue you're seeing. Now, uh, and then you can adjust it using that same method I did here. Where once you identify its hue, then what does it need? It could be lighter or darker. Or, and that is a value control, that means that you, if it's lighter, you need to add probably white to it. If it's darker, a darker version of that color to it. Uh, and, and I'll just leave that there. There are other ways you can darken it just by using darker colors, but you change the hue too. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into that because I want to keep this short. But uh, if you have something like this, uh, the tree trunks. <laughs> There was a, a time in, in my career when I remember a teacher saying that tree trunks were all brown. And I instantly knew that teacher was wrong. Tree trunks don't have a color identity. <laughs> they are the color they are. And whatever color, the bark on the tree trunks, and whatever that color is is going to be affected by the, the colors reflecting on the limb are going to be reflected by the time of uh, influence by the time of day by the kind of light is it a sunset overhead uh, and so forth so to say that a tree trunk is a particular color is wrong it's it's, it's incorrect that's just not true so <laughs> uh, been long enough ago i suppose i'm not going to suffer from that one <laughs> so anyway here's a good way to do that if you're working from photographs you can do this if you're working out in plain air, you can do this method where you hold it up, hold an isolator, and you can also use your hand. I do this a lot when I'm out in plain air because I don't always have these with me. You can create a little isolator with your fist, just like that. A little hole you can look through. Always close one eye and look through the hole with the other and see what, ask yourself, what hue am I looking at? Well, so here's the way you identify it. I'll just put this little isolator right here, and I'll say right there, what hue am I looking at? And so when I look at that hue, it's very hard to detect it. It looks very much like this right here, doesn't it? looks very much neutral. Uh, but then if I look at it a little bit closer, I might see that it may be leaning a little bit more towards blue. So in that case, uh, because blue because it seems to feel a little bit more blue, or, or it could be, be a violet, either one, they will all give you the same thing. I can see right here that um, this is very, very close to what I'm looking at there. So suppose I start out with blue. In this case, I'll start out with ultramarine blue. And this time I'm going to put enough down so that I have something to brush with. And <clears throat> add white to that. Always adjust the value first so that you can see the color. So if I add white to get the value, so we're going for the value first, and uh, just enough white in here to get that value. And let's see, do I have it? Do I have the value? It's a little dark, so I'll need to add a little bit more white. So the whole business of knowing 
what colors to reach for can be accurate. You can always come back and mix the same color again if you know what you put in it to begin with. And you can always know that if you can identify the hues of the colors you're using. I keep repeating myself on that, but it's so simple. There's no complexity to it all and there's certainly no secret to it. And you don't need a whole bunch of, ex spend a whole bunch of money on expensive tricky wheels and cubes and stuff like that. It's just a matter of being able to identify what's there already in a free will. All right, enough of that. All right, I've got it in the same value. Now I'm seeing, now I have something to compare with. When I do that, I'm seeing there, okay, I'm seeing it lean a little bit more towards red. There's a little bit more violet. You see that? See, there's a little bit more violet in it than blue. And in that case, what I could do is simply add a little red. So I'll reach over. In this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. There's a lizard and crimson. And what we'll do is we'll keep that simple. And I need to uh, cr create the value. So we're going, going in a little bit of a contortion here. But I'm telling you that if you're willing to take the time to do this, these, these exercises, you'll be surprised. That, uh, uh, once you go through a number of exercises like that where you're identifying color and then finding how to mix it, uh, it, it's something that doesn't leave you and you will be surprised how it will then enable you to get more accurate color mixing in your paintings. So I'm going to add a little bit of this to this and get it to that, uh, see that adding the lizard and crimson to the blue there is going to give me more uh, leaning towards violet or purple. And all right, let's see, that's very, very close. That's very, very close. But it seems to be just a little bit too intense. Too much color in it. Just a little bit too much color. Now that's violet. Uh, that's really more of a red violet. No, yeah, okay. So that means I go here. And I'll say, is it that? Now I said that looks pretty, pretty, pretty dark on the wheel right there. But if it's that, that, that means I need to add a little bit of that yellow to it. If it's a violet that's leaning more towards blue, I would need to add a little bit more of the yellow orange to it. Uh, if it's a violet that's leaning a little bit more towards red, I'd need to add a little bit of yellow green to it. And so let's just pull just a little bit of the yellow in there. It won't take much. And let's just mix it in. Mix it in and watch that change. And let's see. Okay, that's pretty close. I, I won't go. I won't go with the brushing thing on this one. So you see how that works. Uh, these these intensity wheels, as I said before, are free. I don't know if that kind of thing is available on the market because that's one I created. But the thing is, it's free for you. It's a wonderful reference when you learn how to use it, and it really can teach you how to see color and how to mix the colors you're seeing. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.